Why will we await the judgment from the presidential election petition tribunal? Let's analyze what they will be deliberating on as we speak. Yes, they should be in the process of deliberation, deep one. They should be analyzing all the evidence before them, how INEC conducted the election, and to some extent, their arguments. The first reason that INEC gave that prevented them from uploading presidential election results on election day was that a glitch prevented them from doing so. And that glitch incidentally affected only presidential election results. It didn't affect senatorial National Assembly elections. By the way, they were held the same day. Voters were given three ballots to thumbprint. It's accepted that INE claimed that it was a glitch that prevented them from uploading it. Now, when they came to court, they now turned around and said, ah, despite the fact that a glitch prevented us from uploading the results, one federal high court judgment reinforced our power to conduct election anywhere we want. We can collate anyhow we wish. So, on one hand, they are saying that a glitch prevented them from uploading the results. On the other hand, they are saying that the upload is not needed, that they didn't really need it, that they collated with hard copies. Looking at these two arguments critically and logically, you will see that the second one actually is counterproductive. It exposes them more. Because if INEC is saying that a glitch prevented them from uploading in results, that means they already accepted that it's an obligation to upload, that it is a must that they will upload the results. So why then do they turn around and say, ah, they don't need to upload, that it wasn't necessary? There's a third argument that the lack of upload did not affect the outcome of the election, that the results were collated correctly. Yes, they said this in court. But the evidence before the court says otherwise. Two states that Labour Party collated, the one presented by the mathematician, Rivers and Benue State, I collated these results, but according to the IREV uploaded copies and the hard copies they gave as CTCs to Labour Party, these results are completely the opposite of what INEC announced. They announced APC as winners in Benue and Rivers, but their own hard copies and IREV say otherwise. It says that it is Labour Party that won. So looking at what is going on, it is obvious that INEC, after denying all the accusations by the petitioners, came to court to accept everything. Yes, they couldn't counter the Benway results. They could not counter the River State results. They accepted them that it is real. So it's already an acceptance of guilt. It counters whatever they have said, all their arguments that the non-upload of the presidential election results did not affect the outcome of the election. The Labour Party witness also told the court that he would have calculated and collated all the results, but because of time, he wouldn't want to be doing that while the court is in process. So there's no way out for INEC in this tribunal. They've been caught lying. Everything they said, the petition has countered it. In fact, they even accepted many of them. So there's no way this election will stand. Some people will say, ah, River State's results and Benue State will not make P2B winner now. What are they doing? Yes, you remember that they only needed to show a pattern, and they successfully proved it. When you are telling the court that the non-upload of presidential election results deprived you of the win, that it was because of that they prevented the upload in the first place, and you go on to show the evidence, show the hard copies, show the uploaded ones that they did not upload at the polling unit, this is already against the law anyway, the law specifically says upload at the polling unit after vote counting. So when you show all these and now calculate two states and say yes, look at what we mean. You see the results, you see this. You have shown the pattern, you have shown yes, that it truly affected the outcome of the presidential election. So it's left for the court to look at the remaining evidence to see who truly won the election. Some will also say, why didn't Peter be asked to be declared winner in his final address? Is he no longer sure that he won? Just like what happened to INEC, they made two arguments that countered each other, making it unreasonable and illogical. You can't come to court and be saying that the election was flawed and marred by irregularities and conducted without compliance to the electoral law. And on the other hand, you'll be asking to be declared winner. So in order to avoid the two arguments countering each other, like in the case of INEC, they toned down the second one. 
So it's now at the discretion of the judges to say, hey, are we going to cancel this election despite the fact that we have seen that it was rigged? Even the respondents are arguing that the non-compliance didn't affect the outcome of the election. So we can now calculate the remaining results and see truly if it didn't affect it. So whoever wins should be declared winner. So if the justices say, yes, let's go this route, they might decide to calculate the votes and declare the winner. So they intentionally omitted that line not to be caught up with what happened to INEC. Not that they did not win, they provided evidence to prove that they did. But if the election outcome is not good for Bola Tinubu, will it be good for another person? Yes, it can, if the judges decide to do so. They can understand that the reason they didn't upload the presidential election results was to favor APC. So they can decide to calculate the results. After all, INEC argued that the non-upload did not affect the outcome of the presidential election. So we can all bypass the upload and look at the hard copies truly and calculate them and see who actually came tops. That's the most important thing. After that, they will now look at other constitutional requirements if the person got to thoughts in 24 states of the federation. Apart from the non-compliance by INEC and the determination of the highest lawful votes, the other part of the petition is mostly focused on the disqualification of Tinubu. The presiding judge already showed his hand, asking for forgiveness for Tinubu. Whether he was being sarcastic or joking, he shouldn't have said that. It's not his job to defend Tinubu. That's the job of his lawyers. His job is to correctly interpret the constitution and laws of Nigeria, not talk to us about forgiveness. So it's obvious they are looking at technicalities to free him from disqualification. But they should know one thing, that if the election is cancelled and a rerun is declared, having Tinubu on the ballot will be a great injustice. Because it's obvious that he's benefited from this one, why would they allow him to benefit again? Not this alone, he isn't truly qualified. Yes, that's the real issue. It's not as if the petitioners are asking or begging for him to be disqualified so that they can win. No, 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 no. He is not qualified. Look at all the evidence. Look at all the baggages. He forged certificate. He was involved in a forfeiture. The Supreme Court has already interpreted forfeiture as meaning a fine and that he must have come with a criminal act. So a lot of all these issues, they can't just wave them and say, no, we free him on everything. We are all in it together. Whatever they decide to do, no one will escape happenings in Nigeria, no matter how highly placed you are. Yes, Nigerians are only demanding that justice be done. If they are seriously considering cancellation, it's only right that people who forced the cancellation in the first place should not benefit again. They should not be part of the new election. Because if INEC had done the right thing, we wouldn't be here. The correct winner of the election should have been declared. Look at the whole mess. They put us into this problem in the first place, and if this election is eventually cancelled, Nigeria will spend new money, will spend billions again to conduct a fresh one. So why will they benefit when it's obvious that they are the ones that force the cancellation? Are we going to reward the election riggers and ask them, go and try again, go and perfect what you couldn't perfect in the first one? All the clues and evidence they left around that they should go and perfect it this time around. No, 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 no. that's not how to reward people who did the wrong thing. If this presidential election is cancelled and the rerun declared, the rerun election will be worse than the first one. Yes, that's a guarantee. Look at what happened in the governorship election in Lagos. They prevented people from voting. They didn't go that far during the presidential because they didn't know that people were about to shock them, that they would lose woefully. So with that experience, they prevented people from voting. They started early in the morning, moving around the whole neighborhoods, telling people that are not Yoruba not to come out to vote. It was open. Many videos are bound. So if you are going to go to court to challenge an election and you don't have result sheets to present, how are you going to challenge the results? They actively prevented people from getting evidence to challenge the results at the tribunal. A governorship election that every citizen has the right to come out and vote, they blocked people from voting, they were profiling people along ethnic lines. If you are not Yoruba, you are not allowed to vote as if all Yorubas must vote for APC. So you can imagine the rigging. So cancellation is not an option. Let them not consider it at all. Let them look at the evidence before them and declare a winner. It is better for Nigeria going forward. Do not reward election riggers. If these people are popular like they claim to be, why didn't they contest the election and allow it to be free and fair? 
so that they will truly test their popularity. But it's obvious they can't compete. That's why they resorted to cutting corners, blocking uploads, writing results and intimidating voters with thugs and policemen and snatching ballot boxes. All these, you steal from people and you claim to want to protect them. That's not possible. Thanks for watching. As you can see, live at Tikota, if I'm not voting APC, they will not let you in. I would think person they face for this kind of country will do. Quarter primary school, if I'm not voting APC, they will not allow you to enter. What kind of a country is this? What kind of a country is this?